Hello, hello everyone. My name is Noble and welcome back. This is part two in my series, Remembering Star Wars The Old Republic. In these episodes, I pretty much talk off the cuff about my favorite memories and experiences from this game over the last 10 years of its existence. So if you have something you want to do while you're listening to this, you know, go ahead, put something on in the background or put this on in the background while you, you know, game or do whatever it is you got to do. And let's just, you know, jump right in. This week, I want to talk about companions and why everything that this game has has kind of just been overlooked here in 2022 not just companions but story-wise so let's just let's just go i'm eager to face these trials where do i start i think a lot of people they always say yes bioware great story this game great story but it's lacking everything else which i would say that that's basically true however we wouldn't have had this game for the last 10 years without this compelling, you know, immersive story that Bioware tells through all of the different classes and origin stories as they are now called. The reason why I got so addicted to this game was the Bounty Hunter storyline. I briefly mentioned it last episode, but here's why I got really invested and really addicted to the game, right? So, Star Wars The Order Public forget other games like other mmos but like it's one of the only games that really essentially 95 percent takes off the chains that most developers and most story creatives you know put on the player you play jedi fallen order you play force unleashed you play some far cry or some i don't know uncharted whatever and tomb raider is a good example those stories are all kind of just down the corridor like you know where it's going you are limited in what you actually can do i know it's gotten better in the gaming industry over the years but star wars the older public is something that you can really do almost whatever you want and have it actually you know change the outcome of a story and that outcome stays with you for the rest of your character's lifespan And that is something that I think a lot of people lost. You know, even 10 years later, we're talking about how the Imperial agent, spoilers if you haven't gotten this far, you know, essentially left the empire after dismantling the Star Cabal. And Emperor, Empress Asina makes reference of that in, I believe, like right before Echoes of Oblivion starts, where you decide whether you wanna go back to the empire or remain independent. And that just goes to show how much story building and world building, universe building, galaxy building, I should say, that has had to happen to get to that point. But back to the bounty hunter storyline. I always knew in my personal life, you know, outside of YouTube, that I was never gonna be, you know, uh, a really, not intelligent, but I would say, I wouldn't want to have the jobs that I, you know, my my parents had or my siblings had. I wanted to do what I wanted. I wanted to be a freelancer. I wanted to set my own course and make my own destiny, which really appealed to me when I started playing the bounty hunter. And I believe I'll put it in the video here if I can find it in one of the bounty hunter promos it's like the only law in this galaxy is the one a man makes for himself the only law in this galaxy is the one a man makes for himself the sith may say otherwise but even the empire's reach has limits that 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 got me man like that that freaking got me and you really felt as a bounty hunter like you were the one making all the rules and you know finding your own path through whether it be the great hunt or 
crossing people off, you know, the proverbial list or, you know, helping Darth Tormund. And then, you know, hopefully if you played this right, coming to your senses at the end. But the reason why I bring this up is that I wanted to go on every day, log on every single day and play more of the story. And not just because I was interested in what was going on, I gotta be honest guys, the romance options in this game are some of my favorite. You telling me as a 13 year old that like I can have a girlfriend like in a video game? That's like a, a, a badass, you know, bounty hunting, you know, blaster wielding, you know, whatever, you know, like, yes, sign me up immediately for that, okay? Like, there's there, there was no convincing me that there was anything better than that. So me and Mako have been together since day one. I had no idea that there were only set companions that were gonna, you know, be with you throughout your entire journey. So I remember just flirting with every thing that I possibly could and then being really upset when I when they, they didn't become my companions. So I was like, wait, what? We clearly had a moment. Uh, what the hell? Um, this isn't cool. But all jokes aside, like you literally could get lost in this game. You can create yourself in this game and be whoever you want. And I think that was one of the biggest, you know, appealing factors for me was like, uh, Noble, you know, you may not have a lot of friends IRL that understand you, but it doesn't matter because as soon as you get home, as soon as you get, you know, home from church or home from youth group or whatever, you can jump on and become Shinku champion of the great hunt and you can focus on hanging out with your real friends, which at that time were my guild mates and that was in a, a teeny tiny like Mandalorian role-playing guild at the time. Um, it was clan something, I forget. Um, but at that time, me being 14, 15, I was like, I wanna go hang out with my Mandalorian brothers and sisters. And I would jump into their mumble server and we would all be speaking as if we were seasoned Mandalorians. And it was, I can't explain how great it felt to have that sense of strong community and belonging. I think now in 2022, it's forgotten how much of a safe space and uh, like refuge games like this are. I feel like in today's, in today's world, and I'm guilty of this as well, you know, we like to move on from games when they don't do what we want when we want them to, right? Like now it's, we're kind of in the age where if we don't have new content every 10 to 12 weeks, then game is dead, game is bad, and there's nothing left that the game has to offer for us. Let's go do something else. And that's a very short-sighted, very narrow-minded view, especially of this game. Don't get me wrong, I'm aware <laughs> that if you've been playing the game for 10 years, you may be feeling like you've done a lot of stuff in the game. It may not make as much sense for you to keep playing at the moment. That makes sense. But I think if we really ask ourselves, have we 100% completed this game? You know, I think a lot of us could say no. And that's okay, because there may be parts of the game that you don't enjoy and parts of the game you really like. Like for example, I never really got into the space missions, so, I don't think I'll ever do space missions unless I actually want to be a completionist and get all that stuff done, you know, then, then maybe I'll do that. But I, I like PvP, I like ops, I like, you know, the community aspect of things, so, you know, I, I play the game for that. And I think that just gets lost on a lot of people. Like, you, through, through the story that Bioware created, through the Bounty Hunter storyline, through all the storylines, we have so much opportunity to role play and to create our own stories in these ridiculously big planets and immersive planets. Like, I just, I want you guys, if you have time, if you're still playing, go to Balsavis and just explore Balsavis. Go to the lava caves. Go to the places that you think you've explored but haven't. Just take a look. There is some beautiful things there and great places. I remember I believe I was role-playing on Shinku and I was tracking a 
rogue Sith who needed to be brought back uh, before the Dark Council, which was one of my friends and, you know, their five, you know, Sith, Sith characters. And I remember we were role playing on top of this like cliff inside a volcano. Lava was below, but there was snow kind of like on the other side and up above where like you would see like the, like the tip of the volcano. And I remember, you know, slow walking, RP walking all the way up all the way up to that like peak and just looking out and being like, wow, I can't believe I'm on Balsava's tracking a Sith Lord, a rogue Sith Lord. I know role play is not everyone's game and I'm not saying that that's why I play this game, I because it's not, but you don't, you don't really appreciate what's in this game if you look at it from a perspective of what can it do for me? Which sounds dumb and I'll circle back to that a little later. Because at the end of the day, it's what we all wanna know. What can this game do for us? Why should we play it? You know, all that. But I think a lot of people just forget that this game offers something that no other video game, and more importantly, no other MMO has. The ability to forge your own path in the storyline you can literally marry companions and build genuine relationships with them. This sounds a little weird, but just, you know, hear me out. We all got attached to the companions that we decided to marry. You know, we all got attached to Noble Team in Halo Reach, if you've played that game. We all know how it felt when Emil took that sword to the chest when he just goes, I'm ready, how about you? Like, we all, we all cried about that because we were really emotionally invested in that. And the same goes for this game, although you get to take it 10 steps further and have legitimate conversation and the ability to, you know, marry them or say, no, we'll stay friends or, you know, even the companions that you can't romance and the, the stories that they have outside of them, you learn just so much. And that is something that you can't get in another video game. Like you just, you can't get this level. I mean, if there's one thing that I wish that they would do with the companions is introduce new companions that you can start new relationships with and go on their own different stories with those companions because I don't think they're gonna bring back all of the companion actors, uh, voice actors to do another chapter's worth of, you know, story dialogue between, you know, them and your character. But I do think there's a great opportunity for them to introduce new companions that have the romance option available that can really heighten the level of immersion and and fantasy in, in a game like this. They have the ability to do it. it it's, not, it's not about the engine and all of that. A little side tangent since I brought up the engine. Every time I make videos like this, people comment like, oh my gosh, would they just need to get this engine updated? We already know that they can't do that. Um, but who gives a crap about the engine? Like, you wanna talk about a bad engine or, or, or graphics that look bad. Have you seen World of Warcraft? Hello? Like, like I, am, I am sick of people talking about how much they want a different engine. It's not happening. They, I get it. They made the they, they made the game on an engine that wasn't the greatest, but like like who who cares at this point? Like who cares? Like I guarantee you that the next Star Wars MMO that comes out, if there is one, will not be as good as Star Wars: The Old Republic. I think we all may think it will be better because we may have a team that wants to do roadmaps every six weeks and release content every ten days but that doesn't necessarily make a game good. I think a lot of people could look at older games and say that, but I, I don't think we pay any attention to the things that we already have. You know, we get caught up in getting the next thing and through making these videos and looking back and playing through various things, I really, really think this game has it all. If you just, you know, take a long enough moment to appreciate it, 
and to really get the most out of it. Like if you look past, not even look past, but if you look beyond, look further, deeper into the game outside of, you know, a new operations coming, new PVP, new crafting update, blah, blah, blah. Like there's just so much you can do in this game that you cannot do anywhere else. And I will get more into different story elements in future episodes. I'm gonna have other Star Wars content creators on and former guildmates um, to talk about their experiences and like how we met and and the, the various activities that we did in the game and, and how that brought us closer together. Those will be in episodes like four and five probably. Um, but this game has the best story of any MMO. You can't beat it. I don't care about World of Warcraft. ESO is a close second, and I don't care what you say, all you Final Fantasy people out there, I'm enjoying playing that game, but the story does not compare. Not even close. It's just, it's just not there for me. Um, but you, as a kid, I had the ability to escape a lot of things I just couldn't handle. And thankfully, because of this game, I was kind of able to process my own emotions and what I was going through, through playing the game. I said in the last episode that I learned a lot about not just gaming, but about life through this game, whether it's from other guildmates or the various things I just saw in in, in the story. like. Like, I, like I, I talk about, you know, the Mandalorians and how they have a, a crazy, you know, in-depth honor code or code of honor, whatever you want to call it. And that was something that I legitimately modeled my life after because I wanted to be an honorable person. And I got that from a really great story that showed me that doing the honorable thing is rewarding. And some people don't have those, you know, great role models or examples in real life that they can, you know, really look to uh, to get those life lessons from. And I learned it by telling the Chancellor of the Republic at the very end to live in honor wherever you end up. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life or if friends or or people come and go. Just be be an honorable person, you know. Um, that was just really big for me, and I, I think I think a lot of people I, I think a lot of people got got that from that particular story. But I'm not gonna go over every single story um, ever. Uh, maybe if you guys want me to, I'll do separate story videos. But talking about that, but man, I would say having companions in this game really made it special. Like I really could take Mako with me and fight off the worst imaginable people. And she was always there to kind of reinforce, you know, me being good. Like if you play Bounty Hunter Light Side, you know, Mako essentially loves you, unless it's getting revenge or something like that. But like, it really enforces like good decisions and honorable ones um, and some hard ones too, too. But like, yeah, it's, it's great and I, I'll never be able to express in all the words how much like playing the Bounty Hunter storyline just really helped me get through a lot of stuff. But guys, that's gonna do it for this week's episode. I know it was all over the place with companions and story and we got a little bit of the engine talk. It just, you know, it came to me and I wanted to get it out there, uh, but I'll save that for another episode. But I hope you enjoyed this remembering Swotor and its companions, what they meant. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about the companion stuff a little later, but I want to talk about the bounty hunter stuff for a while just because it really did shape uh, a lot of who I am today. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for listening or watching. My name is Noble, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>